Hi, so I'm back. Um, sorry for the long delay. Um, I've been feeling really, really shitty, but it's starting to get better. I'm in week 13 of my pregnancy, and I'm not as... I, I don't get migraines quite as often anymore. I'm just kind of tired and nauseous still, but hopefully that'll get even better as, um, as I go farther into my second trimester. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, so I want to do makeup today, but I'm going to also try to talk um, at the same time. We'll see how well I can do <laughs> both at the same time. But so I was supposed to um, talk at the uh, at this event online on Facebook hosted by the Belly Dancers of Color Magic group. Really wonderful group. Um, and I was going to talk about um, how we as non-black people, dancers can do our part and, um, help uplift the most marginalized among us, which is who are usually, uh, the black and trans dancers. Um, and I also wanted to talk about how, uh, how to address, how to be productive in conversations with ourselves about race. Like I, I think the, the biggest problem one of the biggest barriers in um, progress is our tendency to take things personally, our tendency to judge ourselves really harshly and see ourselves as like these good or bad people based on whether or not we've made a racist mistake. Okay. And that's a problem by design. I mean, that's... Um, the definition of racist was limited to hate or feeling superior um, over another race because that, that relieves responsibility from the system, from those in power. So it makes it all about the individual, right? But when in reality, it's everything, it's a whole system, there's a whole structure in place to maintain a racial hierarchy. And so first things first is in the <clears throat> more accurate definition, which is, which has, you know, which is, um, um, expressed by those who experience the negative effects of a racist system more than anything. Cause the previous version, previous definition of racist, um, the more commonly accepted, one was honestly come up, come up with them by white people. White people came up with that. And that takes the responsibility away from our collective, right? Like the, of the system. It makes it, um, it turns it into this moral dilemma when it's a lot more than that. Okay. So, um, in order, so, I'll, I'll get to that first. I'll talk about that first because I feel like it affects a lot of non-black people of color too when we talk about anti-blackness, um, especially. We get, you know, I know, I'll, you know, just as a parent, okay, I'm going to try, I'm, I'm going to try, attempt to do makeup while I do, while I'm talking. <laughs> I might not be able to explain what I'm doing, um, but um, I'll try. But, um, Anyhow, so definition of racism and how not to take things personally. What we got to understand, first of all, is there is a system in place that maintains this racial hierarchy with white people at the top, maintaining or benefiting from the privileges and power of, um, you know, having these other groups marginalized, right? And that's, um, I'm not going to give you a history lesson, but I, I'm going to suggest that you read up on the history of whiteness of, of race, like how race came to be a thing in the United States, especially. And it's all for economic reasons, not all for economic reasons, but it's mostly it's it, economics. Capitalism plays a huge part in the subjugation of black and brown people, of non-white people. Okay. And how the definition of whiteness changed as different um, groups from the world immigrated to the United States. But um, but yeah, um, definitely look up the history of whiteness, um, the history of racism, 
um, 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 sorry. So I'm using, I'm using an Ulta liquid shadow, which is also a primer. It's supposed to be waterproof. It's just the Ulta Beauty Matte Cream Eyeshadow. And this is in the color Game Over. So it's just like a light pink. And I'm just using it as a base. Um, I find that so far this is my favorite. I like it better than the Anastasia one. The only thing is that this is an opaque. This has an opaque light pink finish. A light pink um, tint to it. Whereas the um, Anastasia Beverly Hills one is sheer. But this doesn't bother me. I like this pinkish hue, light pinkish hue. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to layer, I'm going to start with lay down a base color and I'm going to use the Nubian palette by Juvia's Place. Um, I told people that I don't like doing nude looks, but I really love this palette. It's just so beautiful. And it's got, you know, it's got a good range of light and um, dark shades and shimmer and mattes. I love it. I love it, love it. What I'm going to do is take a flat eyeshadow brush. Is this a, no, that's a blending one. Where's my flat? Let me see if I even have clean brushes. I'm terrible. I even brought this, like, I even bought this um, spray so I can clean up the lazy way and just, like, spray it and wipe it off. And I haven't really done that much. Although I should do that with this this brush. I'm going to use a paper towel. But anyhow, um, when you understand that history of race in the United States and really um, how it, it dominates the world too, um, because whiteness has colonized like pretty much every major piece of land in the, in the world. <laughs> Um, so you understand, you have to understand the relationship between um, legislation, our history, the structure of our government, um, how, how voting um, rights and, and limitations to voting affect us and how it, how the uh, impact, how it impacts different communities. Um, you think about that, you think about um, who's at the top, like who holds the most positions of power in entertainment, in media, news media, journalism, and pop culture, you know, in businesses, big businesses, um, in legislation, in our government. And you think about who is making all these decisions that impact all of us. And I'm not just talking about legislation. I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about like in pop culture, you know, uh, the decisions that directors make for these movies and TV shows, um, often reflect a bias and it's been a bias. It's a bias that we've got, gotten so accustomed to that we just consider it normal. And that bias is whiteness as normal. I know because as a kid growing up watching, you know, all these shows and enjoying them, of course, and, and relating to all these complex white characters, once I see an Asian character, you know, it's like, oh, cool, I finally see myself, but I still don't relate to them the same way as I do with this white character. Isn't that terrible? Like, I grew, you know, so in other words... You know, our media shapes our culture, shapes our social norms too, and um, in in some ways, and in, in a, to a, I think I think to a lesser extent, extent um, the other way around too. But um, so seeing whiteness as normal, whiteness in government, whiteness in education, and in higher education, our t in our teachers. Whiteness in the richer neighborhoods, whiteness in um, music, uh, in the art world. Who's being more celebrated? It's a subtle, it's a subtle message being sent to us as we grow, you know, um, as we live here day to day. 
and that and it, that that message is that whiteness is the norm. Whiteness is the ideal. Whiteness is the standard. Magazines. Magazines were huge for me when I was growing up because I didn't have the internet. I had teen magazine. I had Sassy. And sometimes I, you know, look at Elle or Vogue, the music magazines. Um, and the images I would see were predominantly white women. Once in a while, they'd tokenize, you know, like a, have a, a, a model of color and be like, and, and it would often be like this, um, more ethnic look <sighs> as if it's so other, you know, as if we're so other. But anyhow, um, so even people of color grow up internalizing whiteness, internalizing white supremacy, the supremacy of whiteness, the normalcy of whiteness, the standard of whiteness. Okay. And, um, and you also see, okay, I'm going to try to put makeup down while I'm talking. I'm going to just take, um, I'm going to start off with this, this color. I just really like it. That's, it's a beautiful, it has a light shimmer. I don't, the names are not, aren't on this. There's no name for each of these colors, but you see here, it's like a peachy, peachy, peachy color. And I'm not sure how it'll work with this. Ooh. My brush still has some cleaner on it. <laughs> I just can't win. And, um... So we grow up internalizing these media images, these, um, these messages. And so, you know, and we will see people of color, characters of color depicted on TV, and there's often stereotypes. And we see that enough. We see those stereotypes enough to believe them ourselves. Does that mean we're horrible people? Bad people? No. Um, sorry, I should be patting this. I need to be doing things right while I'm talking. Patting this. Pat, 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 pat. With a flat eyeshadow brush. I'm just using an elf brush. Yeah, I still have brush cleaner on <laughs> This is going to be an interesting, interesting video. <laughs> okay. Um, even that out. But I really do like this color. It's so pretty. And um, so we, we're trained to internalize and believe these, this otherness of ourselves and you know if, if you're non-black you start to kind of internalize without thinking these um, stereotypes of black people you know because based on how they're depicted on TV and how are they depicted you know up until very recently you know, their characters have been very single, you know, dimensional and, um, just to try their, their tropes. And then we see how, when there's, when the black people are on the news, how, how the news reports crimes involving black people you know, we, uh, we internalize that. And there's been active marketing campaigns from our federal government about black people, about law and order. Yeah. Aimed at, you know, um, aimed at groups that threaten power, namely black people and um, anti-war folks, leftists or whatever. And of course, propaganda. 
And we are so much more susceptible to propaganda than we think. And yes, I, uh, you know, a lot of you are like, we're all individuals, individuals. We're not sheep. It's not like we all believe the same thing. No, of course not. However, there are things that are just drilled into the back of your head without you realizing. And then you don't really address it until you stop and really look inside yourself. But some of you look inside yourself and don't make it very far because you just get stuck in the, oh no, but I am a good person. I'm not a good person. You know, it has nothing to do with that. It really does, doesn't. You know, it, what, what makes you a good or bad person? I don't know. Like, I don't know if there is such a good or bad person. I think we're all kind of on a spectrum, aren't we? I mean, it's just, we grow, we grow as humans, you know? Um, and I think as a parent, you know, trying to learn, navigate parenting in a positive way, and I see other mis like mistakes our previous generations have made in teaching children good versus bad. I'm you're a, oh you're a good girl for doing this. You're a good girl. You know what happens if you're not a good girl for something? You know like anyway. I think it's just a lot of it is how we're raised, and um. You know, and we really have to unlearn this good or bad binary because it's really useless. All it's good for is, <laughs> um, this is what I think of. All it's good, I think of back in the Middle Ages when the Catholic Church tried to, like, make you pay for fucking brownie points to get into heaven. <laughs> That's what maybe makes me think of. Um, nobody here gives a shit about whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. <laughs> All right. And so I feel like we get into this fight in our own brains about whether or not we're really good people when we get called out for things. And what we don't understand is a lot of our mistakes are so common. They're common because we're taught we consume a lot of the same media. No, we don't all have the same taste. I'm not saying that, but we, we have... We are exposed to a lot of the same media, same music, films, commercials, print ads, billboards, whatever, you name it. Um, so we kind of get trained to be racist. We get trained by those in power to believe subconsciously what benefits them and then that feeds our actions so what you need to do is first of all stop judging yourself and stop thinking that when we're calling you out we're judging you we're we're judging whether or not you're a worthy person to be friends with no i i know i'm not really there to make friends <laughs> when i call somebody out it's in hopes of stopping this damage or, you know, as when I'm feeling hurt about something, you know, say, say I come across a really misogynist, really racially misogynist, you know, like the when the whole Asian massage parlor thing shooting happened. You know, when somebody made a, a, a racist mark about the victims or tried to say that race wasn't a factor. I felt gaslit. I felt really hurt and gaslit. Like they're trying to say I'm making the shit up or something that no, what's really happening isn't really happening. No great Asian women are East Asian women are not being targeted for our perceived sexuality. When in fact it really, it, it's, it clearly was a, it clearly was a racialized violence, racialized misogyny. Okay. So when that, when I feel that pain, I'm going to express that pain in whatever way I can, in whatever way I'm accustomed to, whatever way, it, me as a human being. So it can be expected that I'm going to be upset, right? Like, duh, you know, and it's unfair for, say, a white person who is saying these horrible, these things that I see as gaslighting to expect me to be calm because of their ignorance, okay? 
And you got to stop thinking of ignorance as an insult. Again, quit it with the good, bad. You're not, there are things you don't know. Just, and just know that there are things you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And until you can get over this whole ignorance is an insult thing, maybe just accept that, you know, you're not a horrible person. You're not stupid for being ignorant. You know, being ignorant is not an insult. Being ignorant is the, fr and recognizing your ignorance is the first step in growing. Smart people, um, usually are the ones who know they have a lot to learn. That's how you keep learning. Okay. So, but, you know, that ignorance to somebody like me in that situation hurts. It's uh, an act of harm. It's an act of harm because it allows that myth, that stereotype of Asian women to, to be perpetuated, to propagate. And, you know, this violence, this violence by this white guy who felt entitled to Asian female lives, Asian women's lives, because of his own sexual issues. You know, he justifies it. And no, no, not every white male is like that. No. But the fact that these Asian stereotypes are so common and the attitudes towards Asian women are so common and leads to this violence, you know, um, it, it, yeah, it harms us that way. Um Anyhow, so when, if you're a non-black person and you gaslight black people and they get upset and they express their anger in however they need to, <clears throat> you got to understand that your own ignorance, our own ignorance is also really harmful. Okay. Just because we're not white doesn't mean that our experiences are on par with black people. And so, so this whole thing about learning the history of anti-blackness, um, not just the history of racism in the United States, but specifically anti-blackness and, um, is very important in understanding how not to take things personally and how not to quote unquote compete with, um, our black siblings. Okay. I know I've gotten nowhere with my makeup. I've gotten nowhere. I just laid down that, that same, that peachy, pretty peach color. Okay. I'm going to take a short break and put some makeup on. I would like to highlight my under, underneath my eyebrows. Okay. And then And then I would like some depth under my, on my lower lash line. So I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to use this really pretty reddish brown here. Can you see it? Okay. So we, we as non-black people of color need to understand the history of our own subjugation in the United States. Yes. Acknowledge that, but also acknowledge how we have been used by white supremacy for anti-blackness, um, to, to in anti-black, um, uh, objectives. The model minority myth is an example. Oh, well, if Asian Americans can be successful and do well, blah, 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 then that means racism doesn't really exist and it's the black people's fault for not, for not, uh, applying themselves or whatever. No, when you consider how redlining works, how, how, you know, um, what happened after the Civil War, um, with the reconstruction and with Jim Crow and, and with mass incarceration? No. And you consider, you look at the data, um, 
about the economic disparities among racial groups and even within the Asian American group, which is super, super broad, right? Um, Southeast Asian refugees versus like East Asian immigrants um, versus like South Asians versus black Asians versus dark skinned um, Asians versus uh, Pacific Islanders and so on. Look at the history of Hawaii, you know, so you it's uh, just got to understand, got to learn our history and how the history, the history of our communities um, and how we've been used to promote white supremacy in conjunction with anti-blackness. And then you also got to look at the history of, of activism um, between communities. When we, when, when we partnered with each other, but of course we're always broken up by whiteness because divide and conquer is the strategy, right? <laughs> All right, I forget what I'm doing. Uh, I decided I didn't want to do this. I didn't really want to do this. Why did I do this? I just added brown up here. Well, I guess if I wanted to create some depth up here, I can. It'll look fine. Yeah, whatever. It'll work. I'm using this color now. This. This brown. So I'm going with the outer third of my eyelid and then kind of bringing in. I really don't like that because I inadvertently tried to create a crease, like make my crease bigger. And I don't, I don't want to do that with my eyes. I don't see, this is what happens when I don't pay attention. <laughs> I see if I can fix this. Okay. I took a blending brush trying to buff it out. I'm, I'm not doing so well. <laughs> but when you look at the, you look at, you know, um, how we've partnered with how different groups of color and black groups have partnered together in indigenous groups partnered together. And then how things are, things are broken up by whiteness to benefit whiteness. You know, you, when you learn about the, this, you, you understand that it's not, that fighting anti-blackness helps all of us. Okay? Fighting anti-blackness helps everyone, all people of color. Um, fighting white supremacy will help anti-Asian hate. Yeah? It's not, that's why it bothers me when, when I see these memes trying to address anti-Asian hate, but stopping there at just anti-Asian hate. It's like, do you even know where it comes from? It's not just the othering of us Asian people. It's also the anti-blackness. It's also just the whole structure of white supremacy that allows this to happen. Okay. And... You can't address, oh, well, sure, there are some, there are some people of color who've terrorized Asians who've like, yeah, of course, there's individuals, you know, we're all, like I said, we're all subjected to the same media, the same tropes, the same stereotypes. We all see the same things, consume the same news and media, you know, but other people of color are not the ones, are not the ones telling these stories about how inferior we all are. Um, it's the, it's whiteness that's doing that. Okay. It's whiteness that's pitting us against each other. <sighs> I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. You know, um, And honestly, when I see, I, you know, when I see our 
um, Congress addressing anti-Asian hate, but not addressing anti-blackness explicitly in the same way. I, I don't blame black people for resenting that at all. You know, um, and the data shows that they're, be they're being killed and incarcerated at higher rates than we are. You know, no, I'm not saying this is a competition or oppression Olympics. I'm saying all of this has to do with white supremacy. And if we want to get to the root of the problem of all of this, it's white supremacy. And part of white supremacy is anti-blackness. We are used to promote anti-blackness, to hold with hold up white supremacy, which keeps us down too, not us non-black people of color. Okay. So understand, let's not take things personally. We're not good or bad people for having done or said racist things or thinking racist things. We're all racist because it's by design. That's how we are bred in this country. And once you realize that and get over your feelings about your personal judgment on whether or not you're a good or bad person, you realize that's irrelevant. Then you can really move forward and really focus on your actions, on doing better, on uplifting each other. And not just in one aspect of your life, but everything. So... My daughter, I make sure my daughter goes to a school where there's lots of, there's a good healthy mix of kids so, so she can, everybody is normal to her, not just whiteness. I grew up with whiteness being the normal. I want her, I want her to see that everyone is normal, right? Um, I want her to learn from not just white teachers, but black teachers. I know there's a disparity in um, economics and and so I want to promote black businesses as much as possible. So I'm using black owned makeup brands. Um, you know, I'm, so I see where there's a deficit in everywhere. Like this is all constantly on my mind. And I'm not just saying this to like try to get kudos with black people. You know, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying I, I, you know, it, ultimately it's a selfish thing. I know that fighting anti-blackness will fight is fighting white supremacy also, which helps me. Okay. That's how I think of it. And I find that that's how I am most productive. And honestly, that's the truth. Yeah. You know, that's how I try to support equity as much as possible, promote equity as much as possible. Now, not everybody can do, you know, everything, you know, like, um, but, uh, everywhere you can, don't just limit it to dance, limit it, you know, also think about equity when you go grocery shopping, when you, when you look for your schools for your kid, when you teach your kid, when you, when you play with your kid, when you um, enjoy a movie with your kid, or, you know, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of your parents, I'm just speaking because I'm a parent and that's on my mind, you know, but throughout your whole life, read different books. If you're a big reader, read different books with various narratives, okay? Not just make sure you read from diverse, from, um, uh, uh, from authors of marginalized groups, trans authors, Black authors, you know, Asian authors, non, other non-black, um, people of color, um, indigenous authors, you know, so that you can get their story too. You get their story and you get a better picture of what, what needs to be done. Oh my God. My makeup looks like shit. But you know what? Whatever. I'm going to go with it. So I inadvertently made a crease. <laughs> I need to even out. This side needs to be a little darker. Okay. Yeah, so there's your fucking neutral look. <laughs> Excuse me. What I wanted to do, actually, was add a little bit of turquoise somewhere. Because that's my thing right now, is a pop of color somewhere. 
And I think where am I going to do that? I'm going to do maybe down here. Or would that make things look funny? Anyway, so I'm going to use... I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to use this color here, Hater. I like it. I like that it's called Hater. Ooh, pretty. So just a regular eyeshadow brush. This is the e.l.f. one. And I have it kind of like the top half, the front half of my eye. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight with it here. I like it. Okay. So now, now that there's color, I don't hate this so much. I think I made my point. I mean, I, I'm sorry it was all disjointed, but I strong, in, so bottom line to summarize, you being a good or bad person has almost nothing to do with this. Um, there are a lot of common racist beliefs um, held by everyone, whether they're good or bad people, and that's by design. It's because our system has been designed that way, designed for us to uphold whiteness as the normal, as supreme. Understand that. So don't take it personally when you're called out for doing or saying a racist thing. Okay? Um, understand that racism hurts, hurts us at an emotional level. Okay? So we're going to get upset. We're going to be, we're going to say things in an angry way. It's not hate. It's a reflection of our hurt and our, our continued marginalization. And I don't, I forget, I had a track of thought. I had something I wanted to say, but I forget. Anyway, so don't, don't take it as you being a bad person when a person of color or a black person expresses anger or deep pain at you for something. Okay, just recognize that that's the impact of your action or your what you said what, or what you did. And then work through it. <laughs> Sit with it. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. And in order to put yourself in another person's shoes, you may have to educate yourself a lot more on the history, on the social science of racism. Okay. And how that affects our psyche, that uh, how that affects our mental health, how that affects how we navigate through our lives. Okay. All right. Whew. I hope that helps. I think I'm, I'm just done talking about this for now, and I'm just going to finish doing my makeup. <laughs> so here's my nude look, but with turquoise. Okay. Just really bring it up there. I really don't like that I tried to make a crease. And you know, I don't have a, I, I don't mind when other people do it. It's not that I have a, I'm anti-cut crease. It's just for me, because I, my eyes are so political to myself, you know, like, you know, my, my eyes are Asian. I've spent a good chunk of my life wanting it, wanting them to not look Asian, wanting them to, to look whiter, more European. So I resent when I do something that makes them look that way. <laughs> anyway, but I love this. I love this. I, I, I've grown to like it. Yeah. And now I'll do some, I guess I'll add some eyeliner and call it a day. Oh, I'm sweating. I don't even know what time it is. I probably have to go to work soon. And this is a really long video, I know. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And I'm probably not going to edit it. All right. 
where's my eyeliner? Or, you know, I'll go ahead and curl my lashes. I have to curl them before I put eyeliner on. Otherwise, the, as you can see here, I've done it a few times. I get eyeliner on my lash curler. Oops. Okay. Where's my liner? <clears throat> I used the Maybelline Master Precise all day. I'm just going to do a quick wing. Oops. And draw it out. So I draw a little triangle. That's how I do it. I like to draw a downward wing. And then I start lining the lid. So I draw the wing first. It is hot in my room. I'm just sweltering. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and put some mascara on so that I have a finished eye look for you. I really don't want to do the rest of my face. Although I know that it would be more interesting for you to see. I actually did another video a couple weeks ago, but I'm not sure if I'm going to put it up because I don't know if I like the ending look. I did the, I tried the fox eye thing, and I felt ridiculous. But the rest of it was kind of cool, so maybe I'll, I'll, maybe I'll just post it for shits and giggles. You don't like it, you don't like it, that's okay. So now I'm gonna... Am I going to wear this look to work? Why not? <laughs> you know, definition of wearable is different for everybody. I, I don't mind wearing bold colors out. This isn't that bold. It's mostly nude. Just with some blue. Yeah? Kind of similar to what I did with the chocolate color fix a while ago. But this is has a little more dimension. And the turquoise is more obvious here. As usual, I'm just not going to fuck with my brows. Should I conceal? Do I care? No, I don't really care. <laughs> you know what? This is my eye look. I think that's... I'm just going to stick with that. Um... What lipstick? <sighs> My instinct is to go red. Like a true red. But, uh, let's see. And the, my favorite red is the Lip Bars Hot Mama. It is such a beautiful color and a beautiful formula. And I don't know what is good with it. 
I'm not going to bother with concealer. You're just going to have to handle my redness, my imperfections, whatever. You'll live, right? You can conceal if you want to. I'm just too lazy. So this is the lip bar. Their formula is so nice. It's, it's, a, it's a matte liquid lipstick, and it's not at all, like, sticky. The way it dries is so soft and velvety. And you can see like my whiskers because I haven't, I haven't done a whole lot of grooming. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I love a good red lip with turquoise or blue eyeshadow. It's so classic, like Jessica Rabbit. Stunning. I love this kind of applicator. It's easy for me to apply. I mean, it's never perfect, but I like it. Okay. Do I want blush? Do I want a contour? Not really, uh, but pictures. For pictures, maybe I will. Um, maybe I will go ahead and... using my Bye Bye Under Eye It Cosmetics Concealer. It's for the under eye mostly, but I still use it for other places just to conceal my blemishes and red spots. I could color correct too, but God, that's so much effort. <laughs> and I'm lazy. I'm a lazy mama. Mm, I messed up my lipstick. That's okay. I'll just re redo it. Ah! God damn it. My ass is sweaty. It's, it's like a swamp. It's so gross. Alright. Oop! I grabbed the wrong color. Huh? What happened to my hot mama? Oh, there it is, there it is. That's okay. I went over my lip line, but I don't care. And I got lipstick on my teeth, so maybe I should get rid of that. All right. Oh, maybe I will fucking contour. <laughs> um, I'm going to use my Fenty matchstick in cognac. Loop, just the cheeks. Loop. This might be everything, all I do. Pat, 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 blend, 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 blend. Now this is a little warm, so maybe it's not a good color, not a, the best color for contouring, but whatever. It's here, and I like it. 
Okay. And then for my cheeks, maybe I'll do... <sighs> nothing. Maybe I'll just do nothing. I don't know. My brows are always a fucking mess. I'll at least brush them. Nix proof it. Just pressing it on, brushing it on. Oops, and my concealer came off. That's all I want to do with my brows. I don't want to do anything else. Because fuck brows. And you see my blemish, but I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. There you go. Here's the finished look. It doesn't have to take a full 51 minutes. It's because I was talking a lot. Yeah. But you can always watch fast, right? <laughs> Thank you for watching. <coughs> I hope you learned something. If not makeup stuff. If not racial justice stuff, social justice stuff, something. Um, and I hope to be more consistent um, with my videos. Maybe I will post that that fox eye one. I don't know. I'll have to watch it again. Ugh. Watching myself. All right. Thank you. Bye.